steak, beef, ribs. Come join me. We're gonna need salt, and we're gonna need onion, and we're going to need black pepper, and we're gonna need cayenne, and paprika, and garlic, and we're going to need mustard. Ready? Let's go. All right. Two teaspoons of salt. One, two. A quarter teaspoon of pepper. Two teaspoons of paprika. One teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of mustard. I love these because by the these uh, measuring cups because if this doesn't fit like this this side fits perfectly what and a half teaspoon of cayenne mm. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and then we're gonna add one final dry ingredient one quarter cup of brown sugar stir really well Now, with some fancy scissors, we're gonna cut this bag open and get our ribs out. All right, once we got the meat out, we're gonna need to dry it off. So we wanna dry it off of all its meat juices and maybe even water. If you've rinsed them, which is fine, you wanna take the water off as well. Turn them over. This one came with two racks in the same bag, which is okay, which is good. Oh, look. The silver lining, the silver backing of, of the, uh, the bones have been removed already. That's good. It's going to make our life easier. Now that the meat is dry, let's go ahead and get our dry rub, which is this. And we're going to put it on our meat. Use half of it for one, and then we're going to use the other half for the other rack. Make sure you rub it all over the side. Make sure that every little bit of it is covered with this. Now... With the other piece of meat, I'm gonna take off some of this fat, but not this one. Looks like there's not a lot of fat to take off. Excellent, so we've already put the whole dry rub mixture that we had onto the beef, and look what it looks like here. Now we could have put some more dry rub, you can always double the recipe, but this is how much I like on mine. This is going to go into the Instapot right here, and it's going to make this meat fall off the bone delicious. So you can see here that I also pulled off, cut off some of this fat from the, the ribs. And believe me, you're not gonna miss it. You're thinking, oh my goodness, the fat's the best part. Nope, you're not gonna miss it, don't worry about it. You wait and see what this is gonna be like when we take it out of the Instapot and we're gonna throw it into the oven. Just so in your Instapot, you wanna make sure that you have the trivet. This is what's called the trivet. And you wanna make sure you have the trivet in there and you're gonna put the meat inside this space. And oh my gosh, it is too big for this space. So what are we going to do? Just wait, we'll figure it out. Oh man, so I had to cut a whole rib off of the big rack so it would fit. And there it is, it's fitting. The important thing is that it's not touching the bottom, the trivet's there, and then we're gonna put the liquid in right there. We're not gonna pour the liquid on the meat because then you would take off all that dry rub. So make sure you pour the liquid right there. All right, we're gonna start off with half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Remember, down the side. And then half a cup of beef broth. Yeah, down the side. Our rub has made it through the watering process. Very good, now let's turn on the pressure cook and we wanna make sure that it is between 25 and 30 minutes. We're gonna do 29 minutes. Take the top on, put that thing on. The noise, close, seal, and we're ready to go.
While well, that's going, we want to make sure that our oven is on and we're going to start that to bake at 450 degrees. Get that warm because it's going to be about time in 29 minutes. The Instant Pot timer has already completed. The 29 minutes we were waiting for is done. Now this, this says two minutes and we're going to wait for a complete 15 minutes afterwards we're not gonna open up the top and we're gonna leave everything as is. This is called a slow release for 15 minutes. I have lined a sheet tray with aluminum foil and I am ready to get these ribs out. It took 15 minutes, almost 16 minutes for it to do a slow release like we mentioned. And now it's ready, let's check it out. There we go. Whew. Let that steam go. Look how the meat has pulled away from the bone. I'm gonna have to be really careful to pull this out and put it on the tray. I was able to do it, it did a great job. Look at that, it looks amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of salt on top of it, just to add some additional flavor. And I'm gonna put this thing in the oven for 15 more minutes. All right, well, the reason why I'm putting it in the oven right now is to crisp it up. It looks delicious and it is going to be fantastic. But we put it in the oven at 450 degrees for another 15 minutes to crisp up the top part, the top layer of the meat. Minutes are up and it looks amazing. Oh my goodness. So I'm not a big fan of barbecue sauce like the kind of barbecue sauce you put on the meat before you put it in the oven. I like it just the way it is. It just really brings out that meaty flavor that is trapped inside ribs. Now, if you are into barbecue sauce, you would have put this, the barbecue sauce on before you put it in the oven. I'm gonna let this rest just a little bit. Look how much bubbling is going on down here. I do not want to burn my mouth. Delicious! So we've let this rest, not very long, almost about, what is this? 10 minutes, about 10 minutes, and it is just ready. I can't wait any longer. I just want to eat this baby. Now I had to be careful as I pulled this out because the bones just want to just fall out of the meat. And we want to make sure that it doesn't. Now I'm gonna use one hand, one hand delicately holding the camera, the other one holding my mise en blade to cut the meat. Oh my goodness. There we go. Look at that beauty. This is just deliciousness. Look how it's falling off the bone. So I'm going to Cut this off right here. Make it a little easier to serve myself as I eat. And cut off my little piece of this delicious meal. Mmm, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like the fat. I like the meat. Let me take a bite real quick. All right, so I have bolillo. Bolillo is quite Mexican bread. It is like a bun and it is beautiful. You can do anything with it. And like today, as I pulled off this piece of bread, I'm going to use it as a holder, a transporter of beautiful meat. There you go. Isn't this beautiful? See, I don't get my fingers dirty. Yeah. Mmm. 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 I get to enjoy this beautiful meat mm. wrapped up in this white bread. So, if you're at home, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to make, make sure that you get some beef ribs, get an Instapot, throw it in there with this dry rub, start it up, enjoy it. You don't have to go to the barbecue, you can make barbecue at home, simply don't have to go even go outside. As you can see, it was the Instapot and just the oven. I'm glad you came and enjoyed me, enjoyed this amazing food adventure. 
enjoy this food, and please like below, subscribe to my channel, and come back for more, more videos of amazing food that you can make at home. That's right, you. Bye-bye.